Let's get into, Ryan, the next player on the board, and that would be Sullivan Absher, a guy that you're really high on as well. So yep. Sullivan Absher is from North Carolina, goes to South Point High School, Six, another long guy listed at 6'7". Uh, depending on who you look at, between 275 to 285 from a ranking standpoint, on three also ranks him the highest. They have him ranked number 99. Then there's a big drop-off. You have him uh, 194 by 247 Sports, and rivals in ESPN rank him as a four-star, but neither of them have him ranked. So he's not in the top 250 for rivals. He's not in the top 300 for ESPN. This is a top 250 football player for me. I mean, he's he's not to the level of the other kids we've talked about, right? He's not the athlete they are. He's, he's a big, tough kid. He just... He does a lot of similar things. He's just not quite, you know, that that athlete that they are. This is a good football player. And to me, if he's not a top 250 player, and I like to use this joke a lot, but then this is one of the best recruiting classes I've ever seen, right? Right, I mean, exactly. This is a top 250 football player. I, I don't have him 99, like like 247. I, I kind of am closer in, along with, with uh, 247. He's like a top 150. They have a 194. I'd put him a little higher than that. He's like a top 150-ish caliber football player for me right now. That, that was exactly what I was going to say is, is I would say top 150. You could sell me on upside of a top 100-ish. So like 99 is fair if you're just – purely looking at upside, but top one, 150, I think, is is a good spot for Sullivan because I think that he can play offensive tackle, which we'll get into, obviously. And that's where Notre Dame likes him right now. Yeah. Right, but I think he also could be really good at guard because yeah. we talked a lot about Monroe Freeling's pad level. That's not an issue for Sullivan Absher at all. Mm -hmm. No, which is surprising because he's a really long kid. He is. like yeah. That was one of the things that surprised me. Now, he, he is a bit – the reason I – I sometimes struggle with him at guard, and we'll go into this. Is I do think he's a bit of a waste bender, and that's my only issue with him being able to play with that pad level and that power projecting as a guard at the next level. But we'll we'll get into that a little bit. But you know, talented kid, big kid, lots of upside. It's Notre Dame, Clemson, nor NC Staters final three. We think it's going to come down to Notre Dame and, and Clemson, but uh, Notre Dame's going to get a shot at him. So let's get into some film of. Selwyn Absher. So this is Ryan's guy. Let's check it out. As you can see, Ryan, I want to just pause it there just to kind of give you a glimpse of this is a long kid. <laughs> That's a big, tall, long kid. He's He's got broad shoulders, too. Yeah. Broad shoulders to him. Mm -hmm. Look at those splits. Those are the most absurd splits. It's like air raid <laughs> splits, right? Air, air raid or veer, right? And then you can see this one. It's going to be veer because you see where the fullback is lined up. They're running veer here. But look how quickly, look how far away this down block is. Oh no, he didn't get to that guy. I read that one wrong. But he he this these are humongous splits. That's really good because this is a little player he's blocking, Ryan. To get low on this kid, look at that dip. And again, I mean, one consistent thing across the board that we've seen is explosiveness through the mm -hmm. hips. Just the explosiveness on contact there is fantastic. Yep. yep. Shoots his hands, keeps them tight stays low and drives his feet through contact. He does a good job. He he does a really nice job of moving his feet through contact. Really nice job of that. Those insane splits. Again, stays low. It's a good size kid he's going against too. Kid reacts, tried. And this is this is really nice. This shows a little bit his of his you talk about, you know, balance and foot quickness and and being able to move laterally. One of the concerns about a, a a gap like this is there's this big space for that guy to shoot through, Ryan. And mm -hmm. this kid tries to kind of avoid Sullivan and run inside that big old gap. But he's able to redirect with ease. Watch him. He steps like he's going to step. So, like, when the ball's about to be snapped, Sullivan's going to step, like, right at this guy, right? Can you all see that? He's going to step right at him. But this guy is going to shoot way in here. And he's able to kind of plan on that outside foot and really quickly turn his hips. That tells me that's a kid that's got some of that flexibility that you talked about, that balance that I talked about in regards to being a top offensive lineman, to turn his hips and really get good contact and drive that guy. Yep. And I, I like I, I think he is a, has a really good understanding of angles, which I don't mm -hmm. think Charles Jagusa has right now, just because he's a little bit raw in that area. But I think that when we talk about Sullivan, and, and it's a little bit because of the offense that he plays in. Go. I mean, he's he's down blocking a ton. He's working a second level a ton in this in this Play offense with those wide splits. Option offense, you have to have a supreme understanding of blocking angles. Yeah, like there's a lot of things that playing in this option offense, you're gonna have to deprogram. 
But one of the things a coach is going to love about a kid like this is he's going to understand aiming points and angles as well as anybody that they're going to recruit. Absolutely. And that's because of the offense. So there's drawbacks to being in an offense like this, right? Like you, you can't really do that Notre Dame fist bump <laughs> with these kind of splits, right? Kind of leaning way over. But the angles, I mean, and it, you have to have that to play in this offense. And this is a great example right here. And the punch, though, right? The, 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 just the pop to knock this guy to the ground that way. Yep. And he's, he's got an interesting frame, too, because he's got a little bit of a thinner lower body. He's got like mm -hmm. a, a, a pudgier upper body. He's a guy that I think with, the, with some work in the weight room is going to really blow up. Look how far he is off the ball. Freaking Veer. <laughs> I hate the Veer so much. <laughs> As a former defensive player, I also hate the Veer. He's <laughs> got some, he, like, this is not good pad level, right? Guy gets under his pads. Well, it, actually, it's not, that's not good pad level. This guy just gets really low. But look how he's able to just kind of bully that guy off the ball. That guy's trying to hug him. Look at that guy's <laughs> I'm waiting on the kid to like reach, wrap his, jump up and wrap his legs around him and just go down. And yeah, I man. don't know, I don't know if you agree with this, Brian, but this is another reason I like him a little inside because I think that this, out of the players that we've watched so far, I think he has the nastiest disposition. Like he tries to finish dudes on the ground consistently. I agree with you a lot more about him being an inside guy than I do Jagusa. I That's do. fair. That's fair. The only reason I still want to see him at tackle the next level is because I think in Harry Heastan's offense, he wants that at ta right tackle. And the reason I say that is go look at the 2017 team with Tommy Kramer at right tackle, right? Like very similar thing, like the disposition, the physicality, the nastiness. He wants to be able to have that power side, you know, that right side power side. It's why, you know, the McGlinchey combination with Elmer was so good in 2015. Mm -hmm. is, you know, McGlinchey was just that big physical mover type of guy. And so, you know, again, I think with if we're talking generally, I agree with you in regards to, you know, I, I kind of like him inside, but I but I also completely understand why Notre Dame likes him a tackle because of that, that mm -hmm. uh, of what they're looking for. But, yeah, I, I tend to agree. I, I think his mindset is more of a guard. And just look at this, like this is him actually playing guard. Like normal sense. normal football splits now, right? But he just stays low and just drives. And I, and I have a high upside with him as far as a power profile because he's a mm -hmm. skinny kid right now, but yeah. you can still see just the explosiveness on contact. Like yeah. there's natural power there. That's what I was saying. He's going to blow up when he gets into college. Like he's going to get really big and really strong. And that's another reason why you could say, you know, that right tackle, right guard profile is, is really there. Look at, he just, I mean, this is a, not a very big kid, but he just destroyed. I mean, this kid lifts this kid off the ground even before he gets tripped up by the other people. I hate watching the option. I just really want to barf right now. You're not a, uh, you're not a traditionalist, man. They don't no. like the, uh, <laughs> I hate the beer. I hate the beer. <laughs> I, I didn't mind like the '80s and '90s Nebraska Notre Dame option because it was more from like the it was like a power option, you know, yeah. like it was from the high, and didn't bother me as much. But like the Veer, I just, I just the the triple, I just which they're not necessarily the same thing. I just, I just despise those two offenses. I really do. <laughs> Let's get to one more, uh, one more game film. These again, these are game films, not not uh, like full season highlights it, when these are available i like these a lot a lot more to be honest with you and uh people said like uh this is a, an interesting comment here from detroit hunter pretty much their whole line chops except him that's the nature of the option and the reason mm -hmm. he's not chopping is because he's six seven <laughs> and right. he's playing against division three kids right who are going to be smaller and shorter there's no way he can cut blocks so to me that tells me that's smart coaching by his high school team. Don't ask him to do what you're asking your six foot lineman to do against five ten high school players. Mm -hmm. uh, let him blow people up, and that's why he plays with the angles that he at, that he plays. So, uh, good observation, guys. Definitely good observations on that. I like that. All right, let's get to some just a couple more clips here, and then I want to do Elijah Page, and as, as we wrap up tonight. Uh, 
Uh, defensive line needs to keep his head up, man. He's yeah. going to break his neck. No kidding. It's a good size. This is The reason I picked this game is he's going against some good size players in this game, and he just bullies them. I mean, just these kids do not want any piece of him in this game. <laughs> And that's the thing I like, and you're going to see the same thing in Eliza Page. You're seeing, you're seeing Notre Dame get back to that style of of recruiting offensive linemen. You know, if you're not physical, if you're not nasty, if you're not a guy that wants to go dominate in the run game, you're just not a Harry Heastan offensive lineman. Yeah, and and I I agree with your assessment as far as how big he can get because, like you said, lower like it's a little skinnier of a lower half mm-hmm. kind of tells you like he might not be able to put it on, but like the broad shoulders is what really sells mm-hmm. it to me. Yeah. And he's got some some chubbiness he's going to be able to work off too. Mm-hmm. See here you see a little bit of that waist bending, but part of me wonders if that's or I mean the, yeah the waist bending. Part of me wonders if that's also a byproduct of the offense as opposed to his lack of being able being able to bend it at the knees. You know what I mean, Ryan? Like so I'm I'm, yeah. I'm willing to keep my options open that it might be a, a scheme problem more so than a technical problem. But he just he just strikes me from what I can see as more of a a waist bender as as a, a knee bender. Now, it's fair. I mean, it's something that we definitely need to keep an eye on because, like you said, it might just be a part of the offense to a degree. I mean, he reminds me of a defensive tackle that you're just going to put in a four-point stance and just mm-hmm. say, go that way as fast as possible and beat yeah. that down block. You know what I mean? Yep. Completely dominate these two gaps or completely dominate this gap right here. I hate the beer so much. I can't help it. I just got to admit. Even though their quarterback's wearing number seven, I still hate it. <laughs> It's the only good thing about that and Sullivan Absher dominating are the only two good things about this beer. God want us to keep him. Let's see here. I mean, this is just him rooting a guy out trying to get low. It's not exactly mm-hmm. like a great play, like stops his feet, just kind of falls on the guy. But I, you know, he's got to get low. I do like that. He shows he can kind of get low and root that guy out because they're just trying to, you know, they're just trying to do a make a goal line play here and say, hey, we're just not gonna let you, we're not gonna let you get get us pushed downfield. Yeah, for the most part, his his feet are good on contact. That yeah. last one, I felt like his feet just kind of stalled a little on yeah. contact. I think he was just anticipating that guy trying to under you know undercut him in that gap. So yeah, but you know, I, I what I liked about it is he still was able to get low, and you know that's that's the kind of thing that you want to see. So that Ryan is your guy, Solomon Absher. Good player, man. That's, yeah, that's what we get to see from him. So.